Hey guys, it's Lord Civic, and today we are reviewing the newly released 4K physical Blu-ray disc of the movie Star Wars Episode 7: The Force Awakens. As before, if you are interested in winning the digital copy that comes with the Blu-ray disc, make sure to follow the instructions in the pinned comment below. With saying that, let's hop right in. So first, some tech specs. The movie was mostly shot in 35mm film, and then actually some of the bigger, more extravagant set pieces were actually shot on 65mm film IMAX cameras. Then the film was finished in a 4K digital intermediate. So what you're getting here is a 4K native image. And honestly, the showstopper here in this film is the HDR implementation. It is jaw-droppingly gorgeous. Probably some of the best I've ever seen. Um, lightsabers are bright. Um, there were multiple sequences during Rey just driving around Jakku or cleaning stuff off or just walking with BB-8 where I literally had to pause the movie and every time the sky was showing, I was like, oh my gosh, dawn looks gorgeous, uh, sunset looks gorgeous, um, overcast looks gorgeous. Uh, I just wanted to see what the sky would look like next. It was just so beautiful. Desert sand also looked gorgeous. Um, I know a lot of people don't like it, but lens flares use a lot during this film. And I don't really mind it, to be honest. And what I really like about this film, and if you have HDR cameras, you're gonna be excited to hear this, is when, let's say, during the sequence on Jakku, when Finn and Rey are flying the Millennium Falcon, and there's a TIE fighter pilot following them, and as he's shooting his blasters, you can see the green reflecting off of his armor and then the inside of his ship, and it's like, whatever's on the screen, even during the lightsaber battle at the end, it's whatever on the screen, that's what like the whole screen, what the color, that's like, it changes like a color grade. Like some sequences would be green, um, during the lightsaber battle at the end, it's like the screen, when the lightsabers clash each other, it'll be purple, and it just looks absolutely gorgeous. The HDR implementation in this film is extraordinary. But then again, I said this is a mixed bag on the edge of perfection. The biggest problem I had with this movie was Force Awakens tries to capture the aspects of the original trilogy and not just the original trilogy, but also the aesthetics of it as well. And with that, it seems that they didn't just take the film grain that came, I guess, with the cameras they used. They wanted to also add, like, a film grain filter or so to make it look, I guess, as close to the original trilogy to give that original trilogy film as much as possible. And so what you're getting here is you can see all the detail of, like, let's see people's hair and, like, uh, mud. And, like, even at one sequence um, when Han and Chewie get onto the Millennium Falcon... You can literally see kind of like the buildup of like, I guess, brown on Han Solo's white shirt. It's like you can see it's like dirt and sweat mixed together. And it's just like, I didn't see that before. But the biggest problem I had is they added a large amount of film grain to make it look like the original trilogy. And so some sequences where it's like you have the crystal clear and there's a lot of motion going on. It's not really, it's really hard to tell what's going on in the film grain, but it's always there in the backdrop. It looks like there's little things moving and it's like so much like digital noise and it really bothered me. So that was honestly the biggest problem I had. Audio here is pretty good. Um, it's not perfect. It's not anything that's gonna make you wanna go out and buy a sound system. Movies that made me wanna go out and buy a new sound system were Empire, Return of Jedi, and Rogue One. And even like, um, prequels had some sequences like that but I think there was only one scene in here that made me want to go out and buy a new sound system um picture, picture perfect blacks I didn't see, uh, notice any black crushing throughout this film um I didn't feel like there was any details lost either with the picture perfect blacks um I really like how when Kylo Ren is on the screen you can see like especially when he has his mask on you can see like the top part of his figure and then at the bottom of the screen it's like his the bottom rest of his outfit matches with the total like black bars on the top, bottom and top of the screen it just looks fantastic so honestly 
HDR implementation, as I said, is some of the best that I've ever seen. If I had to rate this movie just at, off of HDR, well, not just off of HDR, but if I had to give the HDR rating, I would give it a 10. Audio, sadly, I have, I said, it's not anything that makes you want to go buy a new sound system. I'd have to give that an 8. And then I would give the picture quality. Honestly, if they didn't have that ridiculous film grain filter on it, it I don't think it'd be perfect, but it'd be way better than what it is. I would honestly give that maybe like an 8.5 with the combination of the film grain. So like overall, I would give this movie maybe an 8.9, a 9.0. Um, I'm excited to review Rise of Skywalker and The Last Jedi since those are, I guess, like some of the two new newest Star Wars films. Um, Force Awakens came out in 2015, but yeah, I was saying that 8.99. Make sure to check out my review for The Last Jedi tomorrow if you're interested in winning the digital copy for The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, Rise Skywalker. Make sure to subscribe and to watch all my videos I'll be putting out this week. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have a good day.